On this lesson, we will do a deep dive into Commodore 64 interrupts, raster lines, and timing optimization. If you had a look on some previous video, you may have noticed a code like that, for example, if we want to wait for a specific raster. This code may work well in theory. However, you will notice at least two things. First, the CPU is constantly keep up busy for the waiting loop. So no any parallel operation can be done during this check. Second, the raster lines slightly flick on the left side of the screen. This is not a problem until you are doing a demo with some nice raster bars lend up and down over the screen. However, we will see why this happened and how to avoid this situation. An interrupt is a task triggered on a specific event, and when occurs, it stops the CPU from what is doing in order to perform that task. Once the job is finished, the CPU can return to the interrupted process. In this way, we can easily guess why this is the standard approach used to wait for a specific raster line, because the CPU cycles are no more waster for checking loops. Basically, there are two kinds of interrupts on C64, IRQ and NMI. IRQ stands for interrupt request, NMI stands for non-maskable interrupts. The latter cannot be disabled, at least officially, despite it is still possible to do with some tricks. FFFA is the vector for handling NMI interrupts. FFFE is the vector for handling both IRQ and break instructions. Later we will back into this to see what actually happens. This is our interrupt routine. For now, it do nothing special. However, you'll notice this instruction on register D019. Sometimes you'll see also an increment or decrement operation. By the way, this instruction acknowledged the interrupt. So the VIC know that was handled. If we not do this, the interrupt will be triggered again after we return from this code. The below code restore all the CPU registers from the stack and then the RTI command is the return from interrupt. Previously in the video, I talked about FFFE vector address. If you check on it, you will see that it points to address FF48. Here is the routine that push all CPU registers on the stack. Then it will land to vector 316 if the interrupt responds to a break instruction Otherwise, it will jump to the address stored on vector 314. Here, we are storing the interrupt routine address on address 314, which is the vector address dedicated for raster interrupt. Then, we specify that when the raster beam is at line 80, the interrupt will be triggered.
If you remember, we used the set interrupt command to disable interrupts. With the clean interrupt command, we do the opposite, so interrupts are enabled and can be triggered. By running the program, nothing happens apparently. Let's modify our interrupt routine so the border will flash on every interrupt request. As you can see, at line 80 the current border color is increased by 1. You will notice the border change its color during the middle of the screen. We will talk also about this later. Now, let's end our first IRQ interrupt example by changing the border color every second. Since we are in PAL system, it is enough to do this every 50 frames. Sometimes, you may have seen this routine call instead of the end block of the interrupt we have written before. If you take a look into that address, you will see that the operations are exactly the same. So, take an account that if you are using this approach, you will save 3 bytes on your code, but, on the other hand, you will waste 3 cycle clock due to the jump statement. On a PAL system, graphics consists of 312 horizontal lines. Lines between 51 and 250 pass over the area where sprite and characters are displayed, while the others pass through the borders. A raster line takes 63 clock cycles except the bad line. Each cycle equals to 1.015 microsecond, so about 64 microseconds are taken for an entire line. Before call the interrupt, the CPU must finish the instructions in progress. The interrupt sequence take fixed 7 cycles, so the entire process can take from 9 to 15 cycles. For example, if the CPU encounter a NOP as next instruction, the process would take 9 cycles in the best case. But if the CPU is in the middle of an operation for which a cycle remain, it will take the time for another instruction. Since the longer instruction for the CPU takes 7 cycles, the entire process would take up to 15 cycles. However, it's not finished yet. If you remember, previously in the video we talked about the vector which managed the IRQ interrupt, the FFFE address, which point at FF48 location. So actually, these instructions are processed before entering our IRQ interrupt. As you can see, basically all registers are pushed into stack before jump to the actual interrupt routine. All these instructions costs 29 cycles. Therefore, once we are into the interrupt routine, 
We are already between cycle 38 to 44. Things get obviously worst on bad lines, where CPU has 20 to 23 cycles available because of VIC that steals cycles to CPU in order to fetch sprite and characters data. Bad lines occurs generally each eight lines, where raster beam pass through the screen area from line 51 to 243. Now, if one need to save some cycles for the interrupt, it is possible to disable ROM and kernel bank so the call to FF48 won't be triggered by system. Let's have a quick example. As you can see, first we disable system by setting hex 35 on location 0, 0, 0, 0001. Then, we use directly the vector for IRQ to make point to our interrupt routine. It is important to not return to operation systems, so instead of RTS, we do an infinite jump. At the same time, we should care about manually push and pull register from stack pointer, as this job cannot more be executed by the kernel routine. Doing this way, you could reach the interrupt routine between cycle 9 and 15. In this chapter, we are showing an example of double IRQ approach to obtain a stable raster. Therefore, when the raster beam will reach a specific line, we will be able to draw our bar starting from left border with no flickering. For the ease of understanding, I will write the estimated range of cycles before each instruction. By touching the register D019 and clearing the interrupt, we can jump through the next interrupt without returning from the current one.
Here we are nearly to the approximated end of the interrupt, so we do a set of no operation statement that costs two cycles each. We will land on the next line with a one cycle range of uncertainty. As you can see, our proto bar started from the left border margin and don't flick anymore. This may be a good start from creating nice effect with colored bars. Thanks for watching this video.